Hey there fellow Planeswalkers, it's Steve for Collector Mania, and we're continuing on with our Alternate Tuesdays series. Today we're going to take a look at Popper Commander, and it only took us about a week and a half, and we are right back to Slimefoot the Stowaway. So this card has been making waves all over the place, it, it's an extremely popular commander, you know, all, you know, basically it's just super cool, super fun, a lot of people think it's really cute, which I would agree. Um, so today we are going to take a look at the popper version of Slimefoot, um, but before we break into that I wanted to talk to you guys about Popper to Power for a second. So Popper to Power is one of our, I guess, newer series that we're trying to promote. Um, we did an unofficial first season already, we're breaking into the first official season. So anyway, I have a quick little video about that, it's about 7 minutes long. I will uh, put a little tag, or I'll try to put a little tag that skips ahead of this if you aren't interested or if you've already seen the information. But anyway, let's break into that real quick. Hey there fellow Planeswalkers, it's Steve for Collector Mania, and I'm here to reintroduce to you our Popper to Power series. As our longtime viewers already know, we have been testing this idea out for the last couple of months in an unofficial first season, something we at Collector Mania Studios now refer to as Popper to Power the Learning. Although the learning was a bit of a bumpy ride, we did figure out a few things, and I, along with the rest of the gang, am excited to move this series forward. So I'm proud to announce to you, Popper to Power, the first season. So our new viewers may be asking, what is Popper to Power? It's a way for us at Collector Mania Studios to implement a league structure into our Commander Challenge gameplay. The basic idea is to start out with a popper commander like Tajnar Swordsmith, a creature that is focused on equipment and finding equipment. Basically your deck's going to be more centered around like Voltron type strategies, which is actually pretty powerful in popper. And then say you do your mid-season upgrade to Danitha Capetian Paragon, something that is also pretty focused on auras and equipment, so now you're starting to change your deck a little bit. And then say towards the end you upgrade all the way to something like SRAM. And then, you know, you've gotten to basically the perfect commander for a deck like this. Um, so as you can see, the basic idea is to tone your deck, hone it, you know, make it perfect throughout the, I guess, the season. And you have essentially five weeks to do that. With that understanding, let's go ahead and break into the schedule. So, week one is regular popper commander, so any uncommon creature as your commander and then a deck full of 99 basic cards. From week one, we go to week two, upgrade your popper commander to a peasant commander which essentially means that you can now add uncommons into your main deck. I find this to be one of the most important upgrades because it really shapes the direction of what you're going to do. Then from week 2 week, week 3, we upgrade our Peasant Commander to a regular commander. So, as some of you may notice, we have changed the rules here a little bit. It used to be that you could keep your uncommon commander from the beginning all the way through, but we changed that for continuity reasons. So at this point, you do have to upgrade to a legendary creature. It doesn't have to be... Uh, you know, rare or anything. It can still be uncommon, it just has to be legendary. Then from week 3 to week 4, we upgrade essentially all the way, and then we start adding mythics. This is where you should be fine-tuning your deck. From week 4 to week 5, the player with the most points earned at this point is crowned the season's champion, which uh, we're not 100% sure what we're going to do with this, but we may throw a little bit of a ceremony or something like that. And then we get to play one last game, and this game is basically no, you know, <laughs> restrictions. So we can basically add anything we want and make the deck exactly how we would normally. The last thing I wanted to touch on is the point system. We found that just going from a popper commander deck to a regular commander deck wasn't challenging enough for us. We needed to add something to put us on the line a little bit. So we added this point system challenge. So basically for every card that we upgrade from week to week, we have to earn it. We have to buy that card. And this actually has worked out really well. I mean, it, it adds, like I said, a lot of tension, you know, because it really depends on, oh, can I really upgrade to this commander? Because can I afford doing this? Can I add lands to my deck? Because I have to spend three points for each rare land, you know, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and briefly go over the point structure. Each player starts out every game with plus 10 points. This was our stopgap. This was our way for if a player just couldn't find land or couldn't draw the right cards, just you know got screwed over in several different ways, could still continue to stay in the competition and have a little bit of uh, currency to spend in the next upgrade. Defeating a player is worth plus two points. First place plus five, second plus three, third and fourth get plus two. First blood plus two points. So we really try to encourage several different types of gameplay. So you know different archetypes, so on and so forth. So there are a few points in here based on you know different deck builds. So for example, playing your 15th land. So for those really rampy type decks, you get plus two points just for playing your lands. 
Drawing your 10th card in turn plus 2 points, only once per game of course, because we didn't want to make that too broken. The first time you play your commander plus 1 point, the fifth time you play your commander plus 3 points. Winning without playing your commander plus 2 points, defeating 2 or more players in a turn plus 3 points. This has become really important. <laughs> we found that in the previous uh, unofficial season that you could really earn a lot of points just by killing multiple players in a turn, and it's not that hard to do sometimes. <laughs> defeating a player with commander damage plus 3 points. And then we do, of course, implement a system where there are some bad things that you could be doing in Commander, you know, slowing down the game or just being unsportsmanlike. So, searching your deck for longer than 60 seconds, minus one point. Repeating a combo more than three times in one turn, minus one per loop. So, we put this in here basically because we don't play with infinite combos that much and we didn't want to encourage anybody to just infinite combo everybody out all the time to just earn all the points, you know. It, it, that's, that's not good gameplay or good YouTube. Removing an upgrade card from your deck, minus one per card. We implemented this because we actually didn't have a way to take out cards previously. Once the upgrade card was in, you couldn't take it out, and that became a little bit uh, archaic and barbaric, really. So we implemented this just, uh, you know, to basically discourage you from making bad choices, but you could still, you know, if you put something in that's just awful, you could take it out and, you know, sacrifice a point to do it. Then we've got inappropriate comments and unsportsmanlike behavior, minus two points. This is really more based off of how we feel, like, you know, the other three players may have to judge somebody at some point to see if they are being unsportsmanlike. Um, well, of course, inappropriate comments is pretty obvious, but this is a way for us just to keep it clean and make sure that no one bludens someone to death with their deck box at the end of the game. You know, we want, we want to stay happy and friendly and everybody uh, still having a good time. Then on the other side here you can see the upgrade costs, so as I said our currency is points, so one uncommon card equals one point, one rare card equals three points, one mythic card equals five points, and common cards and basic lands are free. So that is Popper to Power in a nutshell. I hope you guys are as excited as we are about this series. It's something that we are working really really hard on to make sure it goes on more consistently. I mean that's something that our our previous seasons have lacked a little bit, so we're going to try and put these up every Monday, which will be Popper to Power Mondays, for at least as long as the season runs, since we are breaking these up into seasons. As always, leave your comments in the comment section, let us know how we're doing, let us know how you feel about all this, if you think we should add a certain point system, take away certain points, you know, so on and so forth, let us know, we'd love to hear your feedback as always. With that, have a good day, and we will see you in the next video. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and break into the deck list here. So first up I wanted to say, a lot of people have been pointing out, and I would get murdered in the comment section if I didn't include this card, this is not going to go on my version of the deck since I am planning on playing my version for Popular Power, and I think everybody would hate me if I <laughs> came to the game and had some infect, so Phyresis, it's an amazing card in a Popular version of this, it's a way to win the game, really. Um, <laughs> Popper has a, a tendency to be really stally, really just not a whole lot going on, and the games go pretty long. So something like Phyresis can actually finish it up pretty quick. Once again, I won't be playing it in my version. I'm pretty sure the guys would mutiny against me if I did so. But as a, I guess, side note, I would include this in a deck that I was regularly playing for Popper for Slimefoot the Stowaway. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and break into the rest of the deck here. So we're going to go through our creatures really quick. We've got a Viserys here. A Elvish Mystic, a Thaliad, Elves of the Deep Shadow, Essence Warden, Bloodthrone Vampire. I found that having more than just the Fungus sack outlets was really important. Um, sometimes you just need a guy that can sacrifice all of your creatures, not just your saplings. So there are a few of these uh, in and out here. Then we got a Blood Seer. Um, I found that this card's actually really, really powerful. <laughs> I've got a Deadly Recluse. A Death's Bartholiad, Archer's Parapet, so going, going along with the Aristocrat's theme, I decided to add this card in here. Uh, each opponent loses one life, pretty interesting effect. It does require two and a tap, but that's not bad, it's a 0-5 defender, so not bad at all. Thalia Child Dweller, Vitus Bartholiad, Elvish Farmer, Nest Invader. I found that uh, adding a few of these Eldrazi guys was pretty cool too, you know, just having those extra tokens that you can sacrifice and then maybe ramp up to something a little bit bigger. Gavamaya Shap Sapper, <laughs> Thalia Devourer, Centennial Woodreaders, not sure if I'm saying that's right, but uh, just a good kicker card, I mean, draws you two cards if you can kick it, if not it's just 1-4, so a pretty good early game blocker. 
Deathbloom Thaliad, Phyrexian Ranger, Lifespring Druid, Thorn Thaliad, Thaliad Germinator, Farhaven Elf, Ramp's always good, Penumbra Spider, so this is, in my opinion, one of the popper all-stars. I mean, it's a really good creature. Essentially, it dies and turns itself into another copy of itself that's actually a different color, so sometimes that matters. Um, overall, I'd play this in pretty much any green deck. I even play this in my 1v1 green deck that's regular commander, so it's it's pretty good. Demir Houseguard. Uh, never underestimate Transmute. I mean, it can get you out of a lot of things, like really just search for something that costs four. So like your Falconrath Noble, so on and so forth. Thaliad Omnivore. Vulture Saven. This is another popper all-star in my opinion, so I would basically include this in any popper black deck. Being able to exploit a creature and then lose two life and draw two cards, that's actually really good. Gravedigger. Wild Heart Invoker, so just a little bit of pump. I mean, if you can get enough mana and start just uh, hitting people with bigger sapperlings. Kozilex Predator. Falconrath Noble, uh, amazing card and popper. Mold Shambler, a little bit of a removal. Overgrown Armor Source, so. I was stoked when I realized that this card was actually a common and not an uncommon, because that's what I thought it was. <laughs> you know, 4-4 four, four and Popper is actually pretty big, so usually this will survive a few hits, so you can get a few saplings out of it. Spore Mound, once again, I was stoked when I found out this was a common. It's really good, actually. Whenever a land enters battlefield under your control, you get a 1-1 green sapling. Dread Drone, some more Eldrazi. Kerku Dreadmaw, so another kind of attrition of that, well, not attrition. You sacrifice a creature and then gain life equal to sacrifice this creature's toughness, so way to gain life. Saproth, or Sporloth Ancient. Savage Thaliad. Ulamox Crusher, I think this is a auto-include in pretty much every list for Popper. It's a great uh, finisher, really. Now we're breaking into our enchantment, so we've got a Fist of the Ironwood. Great way to make some saplings and give something trample. Calling a Heart Expedition, so good ramp. I mean, it's pretty decent, especially if you find a way to recur enchantments. Night Soil, a great way to make saplings. Snake Umbra, so this is uh, something that had to be actually pointed out to me because I've never, I never really put the two together. But Snake Umbra and Slimefoot, you just deal damage to your opponents and draw cards. That's actually pretty good. So I'm going to be including this in every Slimefoot build that I make. Pestilence, good board wipe. Might of the Masses, so we're breaking into our instance here, so another way to make one of our sapperlings huge, so say we're on the attack and somebody doesn't block one of our sapperlings and we just pump that one and destroy them, so could be pretty good. Tragic Slip, always good removal. Sprout. Reclaim, great recursion. Alter's Reap, great card, card draw. Druid's Deliverance, so obviously the preventing the damage is really good, but also the populate is pretty cool. Haro. Dark Bargain, and a new card from Dominaria. It's a pretty good draw spell, actually. Scatter the Seeds, Convoke, get a whole bunch of, uh, well, three Sapperlings. Relic Crush, probably one of the best, best uh, like, <laughs> removal spells. Unearth, I've been including this in more and more decks. Rampant Growth, Farseek. Uh, Sapperling Migration, so another good uh, way to get some Sapperlings. Read the Bones, good card draw. Kadama's Reach, Primal Growth, Grown from the Ashes. This card is uh, actually really, really cool. Um, I've been holding on to all the copies that I've opened so far. I'm get looking at buying a foil one. I think it's going to be a EDH All-Star. I mean, it's kind of like a weird, like, uh, explosive vegetation, I guess, would be the best way to compare it. But, I mean, it's even kind of better than that in some ways. Having the two lands come into play untapped is actually really cool um, for five mana. That's not bad at all. Growth Spasm. And then we're breaking to our lands. We've got a Rupture Spire. Golgari Guildgate. Jungle Hollow. Golgari Rot Farm. Foul Orchard. Terramorphic Expanse. John Pan Panorama. Evolving Wilds. Mortuary Mire. Bajuka Bog. Baron Moor. Love Cycle Lands. Slippery Karst. And then I believe it's 10 Swamps and 14 Forests. So anyway, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, 
We are probably going to be kicking off the Popper to Power Series 1 here maybe next week, I'm hoping, crossing my fingers. <laughs> we got to get a lot of filming done, so we'll see what happens there. Anyway, with that, we will see you guys next time, and as always, leave all the comments in the comment section, let us know how we're doing, and uh, yeah, have a good day.